And uh, well, here we are starting the second section of the Chapter 2 lecture. The reason I switched this over is I wanted to get this up as a little more uh, precise view. And what we're taking a look at is the overall pattern of trade between the colonies. Basically, it's international trade, 1768 to 1772. And what this illustrates is who were the most important trading partners of the colonies. So let's take a look. And if we take a look at these numbers, we can see that the United Kingdom, Great Britain, was by far the most important trading partner of the colonies. All right, we can see that 80% of all imports that were flowing into the colonies, 80% of those imports were coming from Great Britain. So we can see on an import basis, uh, Great Britain, the United Kingdom was very important. Second is the West Indies. So 98% of imports that were going into the colonies from 1768 to 1772 were coming from the United Kingdom and West Indies, with the United Kingdom providing the vast majority, 80% of those imports. The remaining 2% was coming from Southern Europe, all right, and very little coming in from Africa, 0%, probably just rounded down. We take a look at exports, we can see that again that the United Kingdom is still the most important. 50%, 56% of exports were going to the United Kingdom. Second important is the West Indies with 26%. And then Southern Europe is the third most important with 18% of, of exports going to Southern Europe. And finally, roughly 1% going to Africa. So overall, if we take a look at the pattern of trade, the most important trading partner of the colonies by far is the United Kingdom. The second most important is the West Indies. And the third most important is Southern Europe. So now that we see this overall pattern of trade, let's take a look at individually and break down by the individual regions of the colonies. All right, so we take a look at these numbers here. These are the same numbers that we saw on that previous diagram. So what this does is it breaks out the importance of imports and exports to different regions of the world from England, middle colonies, the upper south, and the lower south. So let's take a look, number one, uh, let's take a look at New England. All right, you can see that import, uh, New England is by far the most important, uh, England is the most important trading partner for New England. 68, 66% of imports that are going into New England are coming from the United Kingdom and followed closely, not very closely, but 32% from the West Indies. So New England, a vast majority of the imports were coming from the United Kingdom and the West Indies. And then when we take a look at their exports, you can see that New England was exporting a great deal to the West Indies. So on an export basis, we can see that the West Indies is very important to New England and that exports from New England to the United Kingdom is roughly about 18%. So you can see that that New England region is going to be running a deficit with, probably is going to be running a deficit with New England. All right, and we don't know. We're going to take a look at the numbers later on. So just realize that, that New England was the, the most important uh, import region for New England, but in the terms of exports from New England, the West Indies was the most important. Let's take a look at the middle colonies in the term of imports. Again, the United Kingdom is the most important and followed by the West Indies. And then we can take a look at the middle colonies. We can see that their distribution of trade is a little bit different. Again, the West Indies is the most important for the middle colonies. But then we see that Southern Europe is the second most important, followed by the United Kingdom. So the New England, I'm sorry, the middle colonies, they have a much more even distribution. As a matter of fact, Southern Europe is much more important to uh, the middle colonies than it is to every other colonial region. Overall, 
uh, 18% of exports for all colonies, while 33% for uh, the middle colonies. So you can see that Southern Europe is a little more important on the export side for the middle colonies. Let's take a look at the, the upper south. We can see again that the United Kingdom is by far the most important, followed by the West Indies. Okay? So again, we can see that for the, all of these regions, the United Kingdom is by far the most important. But some of the differences we can see is on the export side, the Upper South, 83% of their exports are going to the United Kingdom. For all colonies in total, it was 56. So on the export side, the United Kingdom is more important to the Upper South than it is to the colonies as, as a whole. And if we take a look at the Lower South, we can see once again the same pattern, that the United Kingdom is the most important source of imports, followed secondly by the West Indies. All right, but then again, when we take a look on the export side, we can see that new, the United Kingdom is much more important to the, the lower south in the term of exports than it is for the entirety of all the colonies. All colonial exports uh, was 56%, but in the lower south, it was 72% going to the United Kingdom. So by going through this, I just want you to be aware of, in total, how important international trade flows were to the colonies. But I also want you to have an awareness of how that varied from New England to the middle colonies to the upper south. That realize that in New England, we see that that import pattern of the United Kingdom and the West Indies uh, pretty much holds for New England. But the fact that the West Indies is much more important to uh, New England in, in the term in the form of exports. Also, we see that again for the middle colonies that uh, the United Kingdom and the West Indies are the most important ones uh, areas for imports. But when we talk about exports, we can see that the West Indies and Southern Europe are more important to the middle colonies than uh, the colonies as a whole. And also realize that at the Upper South and the Lower South, that, that Southern Europe was less important to the Lower South and the, uh, and the Upper South. If we take a look at it on, on a dollar value basis, what we're going to take a look at is what, what was the balance of trade? Let's take a look at New England. All right. And overall, uh, let's take a look at the colonies in total. So to the United Kingdom, the colonies were running a significant trade deficit. Oop, let me go back to there. We're running a significant trade deficit. All right. In Southern Europe, in total, the colonies were having a trade surplus, and they had a small uh, trade deficit with the West Indies and a tra small surplus with Africa. All right. So in total, they were running a trade deficit and total trade, and the vast majority of that was coming from the United Kingdom. Let's see how that trade deficit impacted the different regions of the colonies and see if there's any differences here. Well, we can see that of that deficit to the United Kingdom, where was the majority of that deficit coming from? It was coming from New England, and it was coming from the middle colonies. So most of the trade deficit with New England was, a, was coming from New England and from the middle colonies. All right, so whatever deficit that was occurring, the main contributing factor was the trade in New England and the middle colonies with the United Kingdom. It is much smaller in the upper south and in the lower south. So anytime we see if there's any economic issues that have to do with the trade deficit with the United Kingdom and any problems this may cause, it, it, particularly when we talk about the Revolutionary War, realize that the, the vast majority of the trade deficit with New England was coming from, um, not New England, of the United Kingdom, was coming from the United, was coming from New England and the Middle Colonies. So let me restate that because I didn't state that very well. That when we start talking about any economic frictions that might be occurring because of this trade deficit with the United Kingdom, particularly when we talk about uh, the Revolutionary War, the majority of the trade deficit with the United Kingdom was coming from New England and the Middle Colonies. So I want you to be very much aware of that. 
that is where the main frictions are going to come from when we start talking about this. And realize that the deficits were much smaller. As a matter of fact, that the lower south and the upper south were actually in surplus in trade. They were actually exporting more than they were importing. They were actually a source of foreign revenues. The south and the, northern, the upper south and the lower south actually had a trade surplus. So I want you to realize that, that New England and the middle colonies in total were a source of trade deficit, while the Upper South and the Lower South were a source of a trade surplus. Uh, finally, I just want to give you a couple of examples of colonial licensing and other types of controls that were out there. Um, for example, the colonies oftentimes would give somebody monopoly power and realize that that individual for example would given the sole power to sell a particular product in a region but also realize what occurs with that that a monopolist is able to restrict their output as compared to perfect competition so when they restrict their output they charge a higher uh, price than is present in perfect competition also there's some other different licensing controls out there so one it would be to give those give an individual monopoly power another would be to control the quality of a particular product so for example if you want your exports to have uh, a reputation for high quality you might have apprenticeship programs uh, for example, nowadays, to become a plumber, you just can't become a plumber and electrician. You have to go through a training and an apprenticeship program. And the notion is that this ensures the quality uh, uh, of the individuals that are out there. Uh, so you might want this type of quality control so that when your exports go into foreign markets, people will think of your product as being of a higher quality and therefore being able to charge a higher price. The example I oftentimes give is, for example, when I was growing up in the 70s and in the 80s, uh, the country, Germany, was often considered a country that produced high quality products. Whatever, if it was a car, if it was knives, if it was electronics, if it was any number of things, if it was made in Germany, the assumption most people had was that it was a high quality product that would last long, it was durable, they had a reputation for that. Now that reputation has not maintained itself over the years, okay, that they're, they're, the assumption of quality of a German product has eroded over the last 20 years. Um, but the notion is that if it's a higher quality product, people will willingly pay a premium of a price for that product because it is of a higher quality. So it was in the vested interest of the colonial authorities that if they could maintain some level of quality for their products, that this would translate into higher export prices for their products. Other reasons for licensing and other types of controls are just from the moral perspective. For example, alcohol and tobacco, the quote-unquote sin products that some people uh, talk about. Uh, you might restrict the availability of alcohol. Even to this day, alcohol and tobacco are restricted. You cannot. You got to be 21 in order to uh, purchase alcohol. I don't know what the age is for tobacco. I don't know if it's 21 or 19, but it's under. You know, it's legislated under moral grounds, and that occurred back in colonial time. Also, the fact that these uh, licensing agreements and other types of controls were sources of revenue. Realize that, that if you license somebody to, to allow them to produce a product, you charge them a fee in order to get that license. An example I can give you is to even today. I run my own consulting business in the state of New Jersey. Every year I have to pay a $50 fee in order to register my company with the state of New Jersey. That is a source of revenue for the state of New Jersey. All right. So realize that, that, that the fees, etc., uh, are forms of taxes that help to raise revenues for uh, the colonies. Uh, that is the end of this second uh, part of, uh, the, of Chapter 2. Uh, realize that there are several main important things I want you to remember. Number one is the role the comparative advantage played in what agriculture and what industry occurred in the colonies, particularly the differences between New England, the middle colonies, the upper south, and the lower south. Two, how the distribution or how the importance of slave labor varied from New England to the middle colonies, to the upper south, and to the lower south. And three, how did the pattern of trade and trade deficits vary 
amongst the different columns.